Hi guys, welcome to the flipped video for lesson five, which is all about the bases and heights of parallelograms. So we've been working with parallelograms and practicing decomposing and rearranging quite a bit. And now we're gonna learn a, another strategy that might be a little bit more quicker for you when finding the area of a parallelogram. Okay, So we have Alina and Tyler, and they were both trying to find the area of this parallelogram right here. Okay. So Alina took her scissors and she decomposed her shape right here. And she took it and she moved it over here to add it on to the other side. So that instead of a parallelogram, she had a, well, let's see, rectangle or square here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So she has a rectangle that is six by seven. And then she could do length times width. Tyler, on the other hand, he also decomposed it, but he did it a little bit differently. Here is where he chose to cut his. And same thing, he rearranged it, moved it on over <coughs> to make a rectangle. So then he could find the area of the rectangle. Okay, these are two different strategies for finding the area of a parallelogram. I want you to come up with one thing that is the same between their two strategies and one thing that is different between their two strategies. So right here you will need to pause the video while you think of one thing that is the same and one thing that is different. All right, you should have at least one thing that was the same and one thing that was different between Alina and Tyler's strategies. Here are just a couple ideas of something that you might have written down. Um, you don't have to have exactly one of these, it's just these are some common possibilities. So for the same, you might have that they both cut off a piece from the left side of the parallelogram, that they both moved a piece from the left side to the right side. You might have that the, they both made a rectangle or that the rectangles are the same size after they've rearranged their parallelogram. Any of those are perfectly fine. Okay, for different, you might say that they cut at different places. You might say that Tyler cut off a bigger section than Alina did. You might say that the rectangles that they made are not in the exact same spot. So you can see Alina's rectangle is more to the left and Tyler's is a little bit more to the right. Um, you might say that Alina cut off a triangle and Tyler cut off a trapezoid. A lot of different possibilities there. Okay, As long as you came up with something, and then you did it perfectly fine. Okay, let's move to the right height. So for this activity, we are going to figure out how to label the bases and heights of parallelograms. Okay, and what you have here, I'm going to split this in two, is you have some examples of how to label the base and height over here. And over here you have some non-examples. Okay. That means that this does not represent the height for the base. Okay, The dashed dotted line is the height. So we'll put height is a dashed line. Okay, And that's for both sides here. So what I want you to do is it says to look at your examples and compare them to your non-examples and select all the statements that are true based on your examples and non-examples up here. So you are going to go through each of these letters and read them and decide which statements you think are true or false. And I will give you a hint. You should find three of them that are true. So go ahead and pause the video, read through those statements, and try and pick out the three that you should circle. Alrighty. So let's go through our letters. A says only a horizontal side of a parallel parallelogram can be a base. Horizontal means going across sideways like this. Well, we can tell that that one is not true because this base right here is vertical and it's going up and down. So A is false. Any side of a parallelogram can be a base. So let's see, we have the bottom, the left side, the bottom, the right side, okay? That is true. We could also have the top as the base. Okay, Any side can be a base, it does not matter which one it is says that a height can be drawn at any angle to the side. Well, if we pay attention to our heights here, we notice they all have the 90 degree angle symbol, okay? 
So this one is false. A base and its corresponding height must be perpendicular to each other. That one plays off of letter C, which means this one is true because perpendicular means that it forms a 90 degree angle. And right here is our 90 degree angle symbol on each of our examples. Okay, E, a height can only be drawn inside a parallelogram. Well, right here we have the height drawn on the outside, so E is false. F says a height can be drawn outside of the parallelogram as long as it is drawn at a 90 degree angle to the base. Okay? It is drawn on the outside. It still meets our 90 degree angle requirement, so F is true. And G says that a base cannot be extended to meet a height. We can see right here it's okay if we draw the height on the outside of the parallelogram. We will have to extend our base out a little bit to meet it. So G is false. Hopefully those went okay for you. Um, remember, this is the first time you're kind of trying it, so if you got a few wrong, don't panic. But when you're ready, go ahead and turn the page. Question two says that five students labeled the base B and the corresponding height H. So if you ever see B and H, you know that that's base and height. For each of these parallelograms, they want to know, did they do them correctly? Okay, so go ahead and look at each letter and decide if they labeled the base and height correctly according to the statements that we just found out were true on page 18. And then when you're ready, go ahead and unpause the video and come back. If we look at A, we have our base is a side of our parallelogram. Our height is drawn at a 90 degree angle. So A is correct. B, our base is a side of our parallelogram, so that is good. But our height is not at a 90 degree angle here. Okay, so this is not 90 degrees. So B is not a, an accurate way to label the base and height. Look at C, a base is a side of our parallelogram. Our height is drawn outside, but we know that's okay because it still meets at a 90 degree angle. So C would be a correct example. For D, our base and our height meet at a 90 degree angle. They are perpendicular to each other, so D is also a good example. E, we have our base and our height. There is not a 90 degree angle symbol anywhere here. Not 90 degrees. So E is not a good example. Okay, so the letters that were correct are A, C, and D. The two that were incorrect were B and E because they were not at 90 degree angles. You will know it's a 90 degree angle because they will have that symbol for you. They don't have that symbol for you. It is not a 90 degree angle unless you know it's a square or rectangle because all four corners are 90 degree angles. All right, we'll flip the page to page 20. And what we're going to do here is find a formula that will help us solve for the area of parallelograms. So first we need to identify a base in corresponding height and then record their lengths in our table, and then we will find the area. So for A, we can find our base and height. Okay, this is a rectangle, so our base can be any side. I'm just gonna make it the bottom. So it's one, two, three, four units. And our height, we're gonna make it a 90 degree angle. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. So the area of our parallelogram, four times six is 24. And they already have square units up in the table for us, so we don't have to rewrite that every time. Okay, B, let's decide um, our base for the bottom. Okay. I like to always choose the base on a line that matches up with my grid. You see how this slanted line does not match up with the grid? That would be very hard to measure. So whenever I'm labeling the base, I like to have it be one that lays perfectly on the grid. So our base is one, two, three, four, five. 
And now we need to draw on our height. Our height is kind of like where we would cut the shape to decompose it and rearrange it. So let's say we would want to cut it right here. So our height is one, two, three. So to find the area, five times three is 15. And we can prove that by rearranging it over here to turn it into a rectangle and five times three is 15. All right, C is a little bit trickier. Okay, so the base could be the bottom or the top line here. We'll do the bottom. So the base is two units. And now our height, remember it needs to connect to our base somewhere. And it needs to go from the base all the way to the other side of our parallelogram. So now it reaches the top. So that was our height, one, two, three is our height. So that means that our area is six square units. And D. This one is the one that can be a little bit tricky because the base is going to be on a vertical side. I like the base to be on a vertical side because that's the side that lines up with the grid nicely. One, two, three, four. So we'll make our height over here, which is two. Four times two is eight. So for any parallelogram, if you know the base and the height, your formula is simply base times height. It's very similar to length times width, but this is for rectangles and squares. And base times height is for parallelograms. All right, that is our final activity for this video. We just have to go over our lesson summary now, and then you will be able to show your notes to the substitute. So for lesson five, we learned that we can choose any of the four sides of the parallelogram as the base. It okay, doesn't matter which side you pick, any of them are fine. We need to draw a perpendicular segment. Okay, perpendicular means that it's 90 degree from a point on the base, so it must be touching the base, to the opposite side of the parallelogram. Okay, That segment will always have the same length, and that is what we call the height. So our base, and then wherever we draw the height, it can be drawn anywhere as long as it goes to the opposite side of the parallelogram and is a 90 degree angle. So there are many different places that you can draw your height. Okay, Same here, If our, this is our base. We could draw the height here because it's touching the base and it goes to the opposite side and it's a 90 degree angle. Here, there, we could draw it here if we wanted. Anywhere is perfectly fine. Okay. Once we um, have found the base and the height, we multiply them. So base times height will give us the area. If we see these are the exact same parallelogram, but there were two different ways of labeling the base and height, we still got the same answer for both of them. So don't worry, just because you label the base in a different area does not mean that you're going to get a different answer. We will all still get the same answers. Okay, so like we said, B is the letter that they will use to label the base of parallelogram and H will be the letter for height. The formula is base times height equals area. And starting with sixth grade math, we start to use this small dot instead of an X symbol for multiplication. And that's so that we don't get confused on whether the X means to multiply or if it is the actual letter X that's part of our math equation. That wraps up lesson five for you on base and height of parallelograms. If you have any questions, please email me. I am in meetings today in Nebraska, but I will be able to get back to you sometime today or over the weekend if you need. Show the sub your notes, and then they will get you the practice problems for tonight. Remember, there's the answer key on Schoology that you can use to help check your work as you are working on these individually at home. If you happen to finish your practice problems, please have the sub check them before you turn them in. Have a great weekend, you guys, and I'll see you on Monday.